Data types in Rust represent a single value. They are used for building blocks for more complex types. In this video, we'll take a look at integers, floats, boolean, and characters. For integers, let's start with the signed integers. The integers will be of the form i followed by some number n. This n tells us the bits that this integer will take up, and it translates the range that it can represent. For a given n, a signed integer will range from minus 2 raised to the power of n minus 1 up to 2 raised to the power of n minus 1 minus 1. So, for example, let's say that i0 is of type i8. Let's set this equal to 0. Here we have an 8 over here. So this will range from minus 2 raised to the 8 minus 1 up to 2 raised to the 8 minus 1 minus 1. 2 to the 7 is 128. So this will be minus 128. And it goes up to 2 to the 7 minus 1. 2 to the 7 is 128. 128 minus 1 is 127. We also have I16, 32, 64, and 128. An easy way to remember this is starting from 8, we multiply by 2. So the next one will be, let's say, I1. I16 is equal to, let's say, 1. And then the next one will be, let's say, I32. 16 multiplied by 2 is 32, so it will be I32. And the next one will be, let's say, 64. And the last one will be 128. And then we also have a sign integer where the size of this integer depends on the computer architecture. The type is called i size. I'm going to name this variable i5 is equal to i size, and let's just set it equal to 1. The size of this variable depends on the computer architecture. If your computer is a 32 bit architecture, then this i size will be i32. If it's 64 bits, then this will be i64. Okay, let's move on to unsigned integers. They follow a similar pattern to the signed integers, where the type will be of the form u followed by n where n will specify the amount of bits that this unsigned integer will occupy. So let's say that u0 of u8 is equal to 1. And then we can also have, let's say, u1 of u16, u2 of u32. Let's name the next one u3, 64, and 1 to 8. The range on unsigned integers are from 0 up to 2 to the n minus 1. So for u8, this will range from 0 to 2 to the 8 minus 1. 2 to the 8 is 256. So 2 to the 8 minus 1 will be this will be equal to 255. And like i size, we also have u size, where the range that it can support depends on your computer architecture. So let's say that u5 is equal to u size. Let's set this equal to 1. This u size you'll encounter when you're dealing with for loops, arrays, and vectors. Basically, they're used for indexes of arrays and vectors. Okay, moving on, we have floats. Floating numbers. Let's say that f0 of type f32 equals 0 0.01. And we can also have f64 also equal to 0 0.01. And then we have boolean. So let's say that v of type boolean equals true. And then characters. Let's say that c of char equals to single quote c. Notice that here we're putting in a single quote. If you put in a double quote, then this will become a string literal. Characters can be any valid Unicode. So we can also put an emoji here. So let's say that e is equal to char, and I'll put an emoji for a crab here. Both of these are valid characters. Okay, so these are some scalar types. Next, I'm going to talk about type conversions, min and max, and overflow. Let's start with type conversion. So let's say that i of type i32 equals, let's set this equal to 1, and I want to convert this i32 into a u32. Then you can do this by saying that u of type u32 is equal to i. Now notice i at the moment is of type i32, and I want to convert this into a u32. Then you can say something like i as u32. And this becomes useful when you're trying to add a signed integer to an unsigned integer. For example, you might have something like that x of type u32 is equal to u, and I want to add i. u is of type u32, and i is of type i32. In this case, I would say i convert this into u32 so that I can add two u32s. Okay, so that's type conversion. Next, let's move on to min and max. Scalar types that can be ordered 
as min and max values. So this means that integers, floats, and characters have a min and max value. However, booleans don't have a min and max value because they cannot be ordered. For example, it doesn't make sense to ask the question, is true greater than or equal to false? To get the min and max value, for example, let's get the min and max value for i32. Then you would type that, call this min i of type i32 is equal to i32 min. And to get the max value, I'll rename this as max i and then change this to max. Let's also print this out, print ln i32 min will be min i. And let's also print i32 max will be max i. We can also get the min and max value for characters. So let's do that. Let's say let min char of type char is equal to char min. And then we'll do the same for max. Max char will be max. Then let's also print this out. Char min char max will be min char. And this will be max char. Let's print these out. Inside my terminal type cargo run dash dash bin. The file is called scalar. Okay, and then we get this value for min i32, this value for max i32, and for char min, I don't know what I'm getting, and for char max, I also don't know what I'm getting. Okay, lastly, let's talk about overflow. One thing you need to watch out for when you're writing production code is that overflows will not panic when your code is compiled in release mode. So let's say that u of type u32, let's set this equal to the maximum of u32. u32 max and we're gonna cause an overflow so let's make this as a mute and then on the next time we'll add one since we're adding one to the maximum number this will cause an overflow and now let's print this out print ln say overflow for u32 inside the terminal let's run the command again and notice that the code panics over here however if we run this command again with the release flag so this will mean that the code will run in production mode Notice that it doesn't panic. After the number overflows, it just returns a zero. So when you're writing production code, you'll need to be aware of overflows. There's two ways to handle this. A built-in function called checked add and wrapping add. Checked add will wrap the result in a data type called option. This data type called option can take two values, sum, and inside this sum, you'll have the result of the addition, or if the result caused the overflow, it will return none. The other function is called wrapping add which will explicitly allow overflows. Let's start by looking at check that. So let's say u32 check that, and let's add u32 max with one, that u equals, and let's print this out. Print ln check that. Since we're adding one to the maximum of u32, this will cause an overflow. So the result that we'll get will be none. Let's also call a function wrapping add. So let's say that u is equal to u32 wrapping add, Let's do addition of u32 max with 1 again. This will again cause an overflow, but this time you will not get a none. Wrapping add. Okay, let's run the code again. First, I'll run the command without the release flag. And then it panics. Let's run the code again with the release flag. Okay, the code did not panic. And we got checked add equals none and wrapping add equals 0. How about if we add some number that doesn't overflow? So, for example, let's add 1 with 1. And then let's execute the command again. And this time we get check that returns sum 2.